Hello, I'm Ronnie Bringle, and I'm a member of a very special group of people called Decorative Painters. Over the years, I've been privileged to share what I've learned with painters all over the world. Oftentimes, hearing painters express a desire to learn more about color, color mixing, and color theory. Well, I don't profess to be an expert on that subject, but I have learned a few things over the years, and I'm willing to share those things with you. We won't be doing an in-depth college course type of color theory class, but I want to share some of the basics that will get you excited about learning more about color. There are many places where you can go to learn more and have more extensive classes about color theory, but I want to give you just enough to get you started and put some excitement back in your painting. So let's go ahead and get started. I thought it would be fun to uh, learn about color by painting a spray of fruit on a wooden painter's palette. I thought that was appropriate. So I picked up this painter's palette from Jerry's Art Arama. It's just a thin wooden palette and I will give the information for that at the end of the video. First of all, when you're going to start a, a project, you have to kind of decide what colors you're going to use for that project. Well, we don't have to decide that because we know that we're going to do all the colors in the color wheel. And I'm going to be using the Golden Open, um, and I'm going to give the, the colors for the Golden Open and the colors for Josonia Artist Colors and you could use whatever acrylics you wanted or whatever oils you wanted to use but I'll give you the colors for those two and I'll list that also at the end of the video. Now for this first lesson I want to talk a little bit about the very first property of color which is hue, H-U-E. Hue is the name of the color. Uh, for instance the hue of this tube of paint would be red. So it's very simple. It's just simply the color's name. Well, why should we care about hue? Um, there are many reasons, actually. Um, it is the most important tool that we use. As artists, we use color. That is our number one tool that we use. Um, it shows what the artist's preference is. So if you want your viewer to learn a little bit about something uh, learn something a little bit about you as an artist you might use your favorite colors generally um, hue can also show emotion and mood and so if you want to set a certain mood uh, in a painting you'll use a certain color and we'll talk about that as time goes on um, so the first thing I want you to do is I want to create a little color wheel that we can use as we go along in our painting. Now yes you can go and you can go to any artist uh, supply store and buy a ready-made color wheel but going to the store and buying a color wheel is not going to teach you about color. So what we want to do is create a little color wheel for us to to use in our study and um, so that you can save the colors that you mix and place them on your color wheel. I think it's a great thing if you do this along with me, uh, reading something or listening to something, watching uh, someone give instruction is a great thing, but when you're doing it yourself is when you really learn how to do it. I have a piece of 90 pound uh, uh, water watercolor paper you can use 90 pound or anywhere up from that. If I was going to really want to put this in my toolkit and save it, I'd probably use more like 140, 160 pound, uh, something a little heavier. But you can use any kind of piece of paper that you want. The first thing you want to do is draw a circle on there so that we can make our color wheel. Now I've got one on here already and all I did was use uh, this little tool that we used when we were in school and it's very simple. You just put your pencil in there and you can make a perfect little circle. So you would just simply make a circle in your heavier weight paper and then you get another piece of paper, a thinner piece that you can cut out easily and make a second circle the same size. Now I've already done that on here. Um, so you make a second circle and now you cut this out. So you're going to take your scissors, 
cut this circle out as evenly as you can. Then you'll take that circle and you'll fold it in half. Now I know there are many. There's a, there's a way. There's a scientific, mathematic, mathematical way to divide a circle into 12 sections. But I don't know what that is. So this is what I've devised in order to get 12 even sections on my color wheel. I fold this paper in half. Then I fold it in half again. I fold it about a third of the way over and about a third of the way over. Now it's not rocket science. We're not here to, to, to send anything up into space. We're just here to create some little sections on a circle. So if it's not exactly even, you're still okay. All right, so then you would lay this circle on your other circle. And then just take a pencil and mark each one of those little fold lines. If you can't see them, what I've done on mine is I went in and I put a pencil mark on each line so that I could make sure I saw it. So just go ahead and on the outside of your circle, make your little marks that show where those fold lines are. Then simply take a ruler and draw a line from mark to mark. So you're going to go across your color wheel and just simply make a line and continue doing that until you have 12 nice little sections. There are 12 colors on the color wheel and so that's what we want to create here is a, a color wheel that looks something like this. Now if you want to keep working on your paper as a whole piece of paper as you put your color mixes on there that's fine. You can cut it out or you can keep uh, working on it like this and maybe it might be helpful even to take some notes along in here that you'll have uh, later on that you can refer to. So there's my basic color wheel that I'm going to um, use to place my colors in each one of their own little spots. There are different ways to arrange the color wheel and different artists have different preferences. I like to put my yellow at the top at 12 o'clock. So to make it easier uh, for me to refer to these little spaces, I'm going to go ahead and imagine this as a clock and to help you identify which section I'm working in, I'm going to go ahead and number these as 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and so forth so that we know exactly where we're putting each color. So now I've got my clock with my various different uh, numbers 1 through 12. We've always uh, drawn pictures and used art as a way of expressing uh, either events in our lives or feelings in our lives. Uh, the colors that we found in nature that we could use without mixing are called primary colors. Those primary colors uh, there are three of them, yellow, red, and blue. These colors can't be mixed the way the other colors are mixed. They are actually found in nature and they are the basis for all the other colors that we mix. So let's start by putting the primary colors on our color wheel. I'm going to start with yellow and I'm going to put my yellow on the number 12 space. So just use a brush that's appropriate. You'll find that I'm not going to be terribly careful simply because I, I want to do this pretty quickly. So it might be a little bit sloppy. You can be as neat as you want to be. So now we've got yellow in our number 12 section. That's one of our primary colors. Now let's go to our red red up here. The yellow in the golden open is cadmium yellow medium and in the Josonia colors it's yellow light. Now as I said I will list these at the end of the video so that you'll be able to write them down. The golden open red is cadmium red medium and the Josonia is naphthol crimson. So we're going to put our red in our number four section. Get our primary colors on here 
and then we can start mixing. So red goes in number four, cadmium red medium. The golden open blue color that I use is ultramarine blue and the Gelsonia is cobalt blue. Um, you would find different uh, colors for different paint companies depending on how they mix their formulas. These are the colors that I like. And you know, now that uh, we have all these paint companies and these chemists that are figuring out how to mix various different colors, we don't always have to mix the colors that we need because they come in a bottle or a tube. But I think it's really important to know what those colors are made from and how they're mixed. So here we have our primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. So what we want to do now is we want to mix our secondary colors. Now the easy way to remember that is that they're the second colors and we mix secondary colors by mixing two primary colors. Let's get our yellow up here at the top. Now you probably all know what you get when you mix red and yellow together and that's going to be orange. Now. I'm not going to give you an exact measurement of each color, but the one basic rule that we almost always follow is that we mix dark into light. So I'm going to take my lighter color of yellow, scoot it over here. Now I want to make sure I've got plenty of color to work with um, as I'm going to paint my project. So I want to scoot plenty of color over there. Now. I've got a nice little pile of yellow here. I can't tell you that it's equal amounts because I don't know what brand of paint you're using. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of red with my yellow. And what I'm looking for is, if you can imagine, pr about the color of an orange that you would eat. An orange is a pretty good example of the color orange. And what I'm doing is just mixing a little bit of red at a time until I think I've got an orange that's good enough to eat. Now, yes, there are orange colors in the tube and in the bottle that we could use as our secondary color. But then we wouldn't know how to mix it, would we? Okay, I'm liking this color of orange. So I'm going to paint orange on my color wheel. The orange goes on the color wheel in space number two. Here's my orange. Okay, that's our first primary color. The next primary color is violet. Some people call it purple. For violet, we're going to mix red and blue. Now, a lot of this information you already have. In fact, you probably know more about color theory than what you think you know. But hopefully I'll be able to just share one or two little things that you, you hadn't thought of before. So I'm going to scoot my red over, scoot my blue over. I want to mix about that much. Well, maybe a little bit more. Okay. And then just little by little, put my red in until I get what you would call a violet. So you're going to think about uh, just a beautiful purple color. And the, the paint that you're using 
is going to either either your blue is going to be stronger and you have to use more blue or your red is going to be stronger and you'll have to use more red looks like I scooped up a little more red than I wanted to so I need to add a little more blue I've got to have more blue out anyway to make another my next primary or my next secondary color so let me I'll just put out a little more blue and then instead of mixing all of this now if you make a mistake and and you have way too much of one color scoop some of it aside and just change part of it don't try to change all of it because then you'll have a whole cup full of paint now your purple color isn't going to show up very pretty your violet isn't going to look very pretty when you've just got your two dark values mixed together so you kinda of have to spread it spread it around on your palette or you can pick up a little bit a little touch of white and mix in with that to see just what color you've got going this is the purple the violet color is the harder one to see so maybe if you spread it onto white you'd be able to see whether it was a nice violet color and I think I'm going to add just a tiny bit more blue to my violet and get it more, just a tiny bit more blue. Okay, now I'm going to paint my violet at number six on my color wheel. I'm going to get a little, get this out here where you can see it. Okay, number six is violet. Now our third secondary color is green. Well, most of you already know that to get green you mix blue and yellow together. So we're going to take some of our ultramarine blue and some cad yellow mid. I'm going to add just a little bit more of the yellow. Oops. Clean my palette knife because I don't want any purple in there. Now I'm going to scoot a little bit of this yellow over and a little at a time add my blue. Now again, depending on the paint manufacturer and what kind of blue you're using, it's going to that will determine how much blue to add to your yellow. What we want here is a fairly grass color, fairly grassy color of green. Not too blue and not too yellow. So just mixing my blue in a little at a time. And a little more here. There's a like I said, there are tube colors that you can use to represent all the colors in the, in the uh, color wheel. But what we're learning here is how to mix them ourselves and how we can use a fairly limited palette and create anything we want. Okay, so this is about the color of dark grass. It's not spring grass. It's more like a summer color. And the green color goes on the color wheel on space number 10. So I'm going to paint my green on space number 10. Now I'm going to take just a minute to clean up my palette and dry my colors so that I can begin putting my next 
mixes on my color wheel. Okay, I've got my palette cleaned up a little bit and I've added some more color to work with. And you can almost see the color wheel happening right here on my palette. With the exception of this little blob here that I mixed uh, earlier and set aside to, to use in this next step. It's because I didn't want to waste it. The next colors that we're going to mix up are called tertiary colors. Um, I don't know, tertiary to me is, is, you know, it's easy to remember it because it kind of, uh, it just kind of sounds like three, tertiary. So the tertiary colors are mixed uh, with a primary color and a secondary color. So primary color, secondary color, primary color, secondary color, primary color, secondary color, and around the wheel we go. So we're going to mix our yellow-orange. So we'll take some yellow and we'll take some orange. What this means is that this is an orange color that just goes a little bit into the yellow shade. So we call it yellow orange. Okay, then let's paint yellow orange in our number one section. Over here. Like I said, this will be a little bit sloppy. I'll try to tidy it up a little bit later on. Okay, our next tertiary color will mix a primary and a secondary. So our primary color that we'll work with now is red and our secondary color is orange. So now we're going to have a color called red orange. So it's an orange color that has a little more red in it than just the plain orange. And in this case it has quite a bit of red. Okay, so our red-orange now we want to paint on our color wheel at 3 o'clock our number three space. The next tertiary color will be our red-violet. So we'll mix the primary color of red mm -hmm. with the secondary color of violet and we'll have our red violet. Now the color that I set aside earlier is almost what I want. I'm going to add just a little bit more red to it. Okay, there we go. And that's our red violet which we'll paint in space number five. The next tertiary color we want is a combination of our primary color of blue with our secondary color of violet. So then we get a blue-violet. A little bit of blue, a little bit of violet. Mix those two together. We'll paint that into our space number seven. Our color wheel is looking very beautiful with all these beautiful bright colors. And we're going to do magic with these colors.
Our next tertiary color is blue-green. So we're going to mix our primary color of blue with our secondary color of green. This will give us blue-green. Now we want to paint our blue-green in the number 9 space. And lastly, we'll mix our tertiary color of yellow-green. So we'll mix our primary color of yellow with our secondary color of green. When mixing these colors, you don't want to really smash them and mix them all up. Uh, it, it, it probably sounds kind of weird, but if you really over mix your paint, it bruises the color and it kills it. So what I like to do is I, I just like to mix it until it's just mixed. I might still be able to see a little bit of marbling in there even. And to me that's mixed just fine. I don't want to bruise the color. And another thing is when you smash it all together and stir it all up like a cake, um, it, it just kind of, it doesn't have any uh, vibrancy. It, it just kind of kills the color. So let's just not over mix our colors. Yellow green goes in, and I'm not sure now that I look at that a second time, I'm thinking maybe I don't have quite enough yellow in my yellow green. Again, the answer is yes. You can buy tubes of paint that are these colors. And so whenever you're painting a project, you don't always have to mix up every single one of the colors that you need. Sometimes you can buy the prepackaged colors. But for our purposes, we want to be able to learn how to mix these colors and what happens to them after they're mixed. So our yellow green now goes in our, a number 11 space and then we have a complete color wheel. Now that I've got all my colors onto my color wheel and I've got all my mixes here on my palette, I'm going to go ahead and place my colors into my wet palette. So that I'll have those to paint my fruit. Now I might have to add a little bit more. I'm going to save my first groove in my wet palette for my white. And I'll start my next one with my yellow and my orange. I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze a little more yellow right in there right now. And what I like to do is put this in my wet palette in color families. So I'm going to do my yellow color family. So that's yellow and yellow orange. And I'm going to go ahead and put my red orange in that same line. Anything that has yellow in it. Then I'm going to do Oh, sorry, that was orange. Now I'm going to do my red orange. So I've got my yellow, my yellow orange, my orange, and my red orange. So I've got my primary color, my secondary color, and my two tertiary colors. The next primary color 
I want to make sure you can see all of this, is my red. I'll put red in my red family groove. There goes my red, my red violet, my blue violet, whoops, nope, gotta get my violet. So I'll put my secondary color of violet, then my tertiary color of blue violet. You gotta think. Okay, so now on that I have anything that has red in it. I have my primary color of red, my secondary color of violet, my tertiaries of red violet and blue violet. Now let's go with my third primary color of blue. Get my blue in my wet palette so I'll have that to work with. That's my primary color. Now my blue green. That's tertiary color. My green, now green is a mix of blue and yellow, two primaries, so that's a secondary color. And then my yellow green is a tertiary color by mixing the primary of yellow and the secondary of green. So now I've got my, I've got my primary blue, my secondary green, and my tertiaries of blue-green and yellow-green. I'll put my white in this first uh, groove. I'll put my browns, my burnt umber, and my black in the second groove. So my white for this project is going to be Titan Buff. Or in Jasonia, it would be smoked pearl. Then I'm going to use burnt umber. And I want to put that over here in this groove. And then for my black. Uh, burnt Umber is both Jostonia and Golden, and for black is Carbon Black, both in the Jostonia and in the Golden. So now I've got my color wheel plus white plus a couple of uh, a new uh, a, a earth color of brown and then the black. So I've got all of those colors to work with on my fruit, and we'll start that next week. I'll see you then.